Uh, hello and how are you? My name is Mohindo Mubarak and I welcome you to our sixth if not fifth class of learning how to program websites at advanced level and we're going to look at Laravel today of course. So we're going to resume from where we stopped at in the previous video and today we're going to look at um, Laravel views and then layouts and then also uh, Laravel database. So in other words Today, the main topic is going to be how we can communicate with the database using the Laravel project. So it's going to be an interesting uh, lecture today. I hope at this point you have been watching our previous classes and uh, you know what is meant by a view, you know what is meant by a route, you know what is meant by a controller, you know what is meant by, by what? By different things when you talk about Laravel, installing, composer, all those things, you should be knowing them at this point. So if you don't, I recommend you to go and watch our previous videos and make sure that you're on the same point with us before we do what we proceed. But if you have good grounds on Laravel, still you can start with us today. So with that much said, let's begin the business. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to load it my project of the, my previous project, the one that I've been working with into the what? Into the text editor or our IDE. So here's the project. So it is here, Eugene24. So I'm just going to drag and drop it here. Then after that, I'm going to expand my editor. And then I'm going to load, I'm going to expand my what? My terminal. Okay. And then I'm going to create the server. I'm going to serve this project. So to serve it, it's going to be um, PHP. Uh, PHP artisan serve okay so it's going to wait for us a temporary server and there we are let me increase the font so you can see stuff properly okay so i'm going to copy this link and open it in my browser here's the browser close this other that can cause distractions okay and then paste there the link and we can see we're on the home page so at this point you should be knowing what we talk about okay home page so with that much said, uh, let's go ahead and now start uh, from where I stopped at in the previous video. So as today, as I said, today we're going to mainly look at databases. But we go before we go to databases, we're going to just get a little bit introduction uh, to Laravel forms and then uh, Laravel layouts and then uh, we we'll go to database. But we'll come back and uh, look, more in, look more deeper into Laravel forms and Laravel form validation. Okay. So last time we looked at views and uh, there's one more thing that uh, I would like us to know, which is what we call layout. So views and layouts, they work together. So a layout is kind of a template or a template that will help you not to repeat yourself. As you know, most of our website we always repeat ourselves. Let me show you something here. If I, for example, if I go to YouTube, you'll find that uh, some things that on YouTube, they are repeating themselves. For example, you see here. Here there is a search bar, there is my user, I am my, my user photo, and there is, there is this menu. Even though I open a single YouTube video, still the search bar will remain there and the user photo. So this one will maintain the flow of the what? Of the project to not repeat, I mean, uh, to, to look the same, to look the same across the whole uh, project. So how do they do that? They do that by creating just a main layout that will not force you to do what? To repeat yourself and then you just be changing uh, specific parts as you can see here this one looks like the home page but the only difference between this and the home page is this video and these details even though I go to a single channel let me go let me say I'm going to this particular channel you see it looks like home page but the only change is this top uh, top bar I mean, is this the content that we are displaying? But this top bar, the search, this uh, user icon, everything is just like the home page. So they create a template or what we call a layout. They create it one time and then they put a field that they want to be changing multiple times. So if you, if you also want to create consistent uh, projects, you also need something of that kind. You create a template one time and then uh, you just be changing somewhat some fields. So that's what we're going to look at today. So let me go and uh, show you our homepage. I mean our project. 
so this is our project and i'm going to expand this and then here we had created just one view which is which was a uh, just uh, the home page okay and we, ex we, ex we extended this view so assume that uh, we want this home page to have maybe about us and maybe uh, we have want to have about us and uh, maybe contact us page so what shall we do you remember previously we had created um our routes let me come to routes where's the routes the routes here can i see the routes okay the routes are here okay so here are the routes and then here we have the web route and here the web route you have the about us and then the contact us okay so if i come here and put a stroke about we can see the about us page and this is coming from the view file okay now what if you want to put the navigation like uh, i want someone to be able to click and go to about us and click to go to home page and click to go to another page so if you want to do like that what shall what shall we do we we'll just simply come to our views which are under resources okay views under resources and then we come for example here to the home page okay so here in the home page you're going to create our menu that you're going to use okay so this menu is the one that we'll be using to navigate to about us page to navigate to any other page okay so i'm going to create here maybe an ordered list an ordered list and uh, i'm going to put here li list item i'm going to put our main main menu okay so here in the main menu i'm going to put now other list item that are going to enable us to go to other uh to, to other pages okay so if i put here i want uh, a page a, a link that will take us to home page so i'll just simply put their link and then put um, uh, a link a tag and then put um, stroke that is of course the home page and then put the wording home and then i created the link that will take us to about us page so i'll say about create a link that will take us to contact us page and say contact okay so i'll just simply put here slash contact and slash here about okay so if you save like that refresh of course it's not on about us page but if we go to home page you see our list is already there our main menu is there so if i click on home i'm on home if i click on about it takes us to about us page but you see the problem now the problem is we are not seeing now we cannot go back we cannot see the home page why because this item is only in what in home page but what if we found a way of making this appear in every page and we only change the content so that's when we need what that's when we need layout so i'm going to create um the layout okay our first layout so to create a, a layout you just simply uh, come to your views and then you create it's just like a normal file okay create here i'm going to call it main or layout main layout layout dash main dot blade dot php so that's going to be our main layout so this main layout is going to have everything like that we had on for example on the home page you're going to have everything so i'm going to copy and come here to main layout with the layout okay let me create from scratch it is here so this layout is going to have our html okay our html now there are some places that are going to be changing okay so those changes that will be changing is where we're going to put what we call field so for example here we'll have a title will come here and then here maybe we'll have our content okay content will come here so this is going to be the layout now we want to be able to, re to replace this title according to whatever thing uses it whatever uh, uh view uses it okay so if you want to change this title you can you put at yield at yield just select b just write yield yield okay and then you create this at yield and then you open bracket and then you give the name of this yield so this name of this yield you're going to call it what we're going to call it title so it means that we can replace so we can overwrite this what this title so here i want to put content okay so i'll put here add content i mean sorry i'll put yield and then sorry b b tag yield, and then put here add content so our content will be coming here so if you want anything this any if you want any view to access anything in this layout 
don't have any content of this layout we put it anywhere here so anything that is here will appear in that view but only this field will be what will be changing so what i'm going to do i'm going to get our menu that was just created here i'm going to get it and then maybe put it here okay i'm going to put it here you see so that's our menu and it's there and then we have this field so this menu will appear everywhere but the only thing that will be changing is the yield everywhere that we put yield so after doing that now we have to implement this what this menu i mean this layout so to implement this layout i will just simply come to home okay so it means that i'm going to remove everything i'm going to remove everything okay but i'm going to extend only this yield i'm going to extend this yield so that i don't need to again repeat myself writing the html the what the what i don't need to repeat myself all of those they'll be found in what in the layout so i'm going to extend to, to this layout okay so to do that we just simply write extend so it's blade extend b extend eh? and then you put the name of the layout okay the location so this layout is inside views inside location otherwise if it is inside another folder you could put the name of that folder and then dot that layout for example most of the time we need to put the layouts in the same in the same folder so what i'm going to do i'm going to put this layout in one particular folder someone is calling me ah uh, so you're extending here layout that blade so if you want to put these layouts in the same folder uh, you can as well do that so you come under views and make sure that folder is inside the view come under view and then give me a baby layouts okay layouts so it means that all your layouts will be in one folder so to, to keep your things organized i just drag and drop it here in this folder so if you want to access that folder you just simply say layouts dot what dot then the name of the what of the layout remove the word dot blade is not necessary there okay so by doing like that it means that this home page is going to extend this particular layout so let's go ahead and refresh our page so if i come and refresh the home page you can see our menu is there and this menu is only in the what in our layout so we know that this one has successfully been included so after doing that let's go ahead and uh, now add the content okay so if you want to add the content if I add the content, you can simply now come to our home page. Okay, so I can write here anything. You see, it is it's coming on top. But if you see, according to our layout, according to our layout, the content is supposed to be under the what under the menu. So now it comes now to the place when you want to replace a certain yield or a certain field. So to to, to replace this this field, this content field, there are two ways. Okay, you can replace it by a string. Or you can replace it by what by text i mean by 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 group of html so i'm going to come to our home page and then try to replace that uh content okay so to replace it we write what we call after extending this blade and then we're going to replace it by writing what we call uh content just write b content okay so if you had put that plugin you'll have the uh the place where to you'll have the suggestion okay I mean, sorry, section, not content, B section, okay? So if you have that plugin, you'll have the place where to it will automatically suggest it for you. But if you want to write it from scratch, just write at, at what? At section, like this, then open bracket, and then you specify here the name. Now, I want to replace this section of what? This section of content. So you're going to say at section, content, and then you make sure that you end this section. and say end section, at end section at end section okay so this one means that between here you're going to write your what your content okay so the home page content i'm going to put here maybe h1 and say home page home page okay so it means that this one's going to be our home page so after doing that uh now if i come and refresh you can see our home page and it has come in the exact place that we wanted it in the what in the content section so that's how we write it now if you observe here uh, the title is not set the title is not set now if we want to replace the title what you're going to do you're going to replace here you see we have a place where we have to automatically fill this title so to replace that one we can write anywhere and just simply say add content add add section sorry add section now the second way of how to do this for example a title is just a line it's not going to be a group of html you can as well do it like this you pass two parameters one the name of the what of the of the of the yield 
two you pass uh, what you want to replace there for example I want to replace there the name of this title maybe you can say UG news UG news 24 home so by doing like that we'll have replaced this title with the home so if I come and refresh you'll see you have here UG news 24 has changed to what to home so after doing that let's do the, the same to what to our to our about us page so I'll copy that and come then to about and replace it here okay so here I can just simply put about us about ah uh, sorry about us and then come here put here UG News 24 about so I'll do the same for contact us so it's the contact I think I've not done the contact <laughs> I've not done the contact okay let's go ahead and create the contact us page so I just come and receive this one as contact okay so the under contact you're going to put here uh, Eugenius 24 contact us so I'm just going to change this one to contact us okay then I'm going to go to our route our controller sorry which is under HTTP up under HTTP and then we can come to controller and then change this uh, and add uh, and add uh, sorry say home controller uh, we have not added the about we have about okay we have only home let us add also another method for about about and of course it is returning the view of about about and then uh, here we're going to put here maybe contact it's turning the view of contact so after doing that uh, we are going to uh, to come to the to to, to what to our route okay and then put this contact we are going to now comment it this one was just for elaborating I'll just comment it and uh, I'll return here the controller and put here contact about and then maybe also contact so I'll put a stroke contact and here I'll put stroke what? stroke about this one is okay so save now come and refresh should be able now to navigate to home page to uh -oh, something is all right okay about us about uh controller home does not exist let us see about controller or stroke here i have to add here about okay i forgot to put here the method to be called so refresh now it's working see about us contact us and these are different pages eh you see there are different pages and we are able to get only this menu and we wrote it only one time that's the beauty you write it only one time and then um, you're able to replace it just only the content you see i can now navigate with simplicity so i hope now you get the concept of uh, the view and uh, what and uh, the layout the layout is a template okay you write it only one time and then you reuse it on different what on different uh pages okay to avoid repeating yourself and then the view of course it is the what it is the content that you write inside the inside the page okay so with that much said we are going to add uh, some little uh, css into our project so that it should uh, be simpler for us to make a beautiful uh, user interfaces just for elaborating for for practicing and they are going to use bootstrap eh? bootstrap for css cdn Okay, so search for Bootstrap for CSS, and then uh, look for this link. This is our Bootstrap for. So I'm going to come, come and get this link where there is CSS. I don't want to download the whole Bootstrap. I just want the, the this the code. So I'll come and copy this code. I mean this link where there is Bootstrap. Okay, so I'll come and what is this is Bootstrap? This is not Bootstrap for. I say bootstrap for one bootstrap for so come and copy this link okay copy that link you can include it to your project directly or you can uh, archive it I mean uh, you can download it and that's what I want to do okay so I'll copy only this link 
this CSS link. Copy it, paste it there, and then you should be able to get Bootstrap. I hope you copied it right. You should be able to get these files of Bootstrap. So this is the one that I want. This is just files of Bootstrap. Eh? So I'll copy them all, and I'm going to create uh, this Bootstrap file in our, my my project. So I'll come here to public folder. This public folder, okay? This public folder. I'm going to add there new file, and I'm going to call it um, bootstrap.css, okay? And then in there, I'm going to put uh, my what? My Bootstrap file. So I'll copy this code, copy it all, and I'm going to paste it here in my bootstrap.css file. Paste, okay? So this is our Bootstrap. I've pasted it there in bootstrap.css, okay? So after that, I'm going to include it in my project. So to include it in my project, I'll just simply come and say, um, come to the view, come to the layout. So since we want to write it only one time, I'm just going to put it here. So I'll simply come and say link and then say, bootstrap.css hope it's going to work okay so let's go ahead and refresh our home page it's not working let me come here to view uh, it's not working it's not being found let me try to put in this folder uh, where is my css okay bootstrap and css i'll try to move it in another folder if another folder a folder of resources public resources let me try to put here where there's upload css eh? and see if it will work come on copy this paste it in upload css what if i search upload css does not work okay so found to include css just search this laravel dot I mean exclude exclude dot I mean exclude um, public folder dot ht access so i hope that's gonna help mm, you have to write this line i want to exclude that that folder of public from what from uh, from laravel i don't want it to be ever written i think this is the line I hope just copy these two lines and then come and um, look for the dot HTT access file. I hope it's not there. So I'm going to create it. So come on top of your project, on top of your project, right click and say new file and write dot HT access like this on top of the project. And then um, that file write something like this i'm going to explain don't worry and then exclude the folder i'm going to explain these things don't worry don't worry Users. Uh, let's just write Laravel that HT access. Copy this. Yeah, I think this one that's going to work. Copy that. And then come and refresh and then click on that bootstrap bootstrap it's not working 
pause. Uh, sorry for that. I done. I just done a mistake. I'd written a wrong name. You see, it is not. I'd written a wrong file name. I'd written bootstrap like this. Okay, I forgot put T, so I have to put bootstrap. I wrote a wrong thing. Eh? So here, uh, let me repeat. Here we have a file. Here, in in public folder, public folder. Here, we have our file of bootstrap.css and uh, i've just downloaded this file and pasted it there and saved it okay so after putting bootstrap.css i hope you all know basics of bootstrap what i've done here i've just come to my laravel project layout and then include bootstrap.css but uh .htt access don't mind about it don't mind about it that much we'll look at it later but if it doesn't work, you can try this .htt access files. Just write these things in your .htt access, but it must work. So we have put bootstrap.css here, okay? Bootstrap.css. So if I come and refresh here, uh, we can see now Bootstrap being loaded. So that one should be straightforward, okay? So after adding that, uh, it means that we have now Bootstrap well loaded in our heart, in our project. So what else? Uh, let me try to make it a little bit beautiful. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to surround this one with a container. So I'll come to our layout and give class of container to the parent. So if I refresh, you'll we'll have these things in a center. So this menu, I can put on one side and then this content will be on the other side. So to do that, I can just simply write our, um, our, what? our row. So I'll come here to menu and write div and then give the class of what of row and then give here div and give here a class of um, of call md maybe six um, no no four and then get this link i mean this menu and put it here okay then after that then after this call immediately after this column create another column div and give a class of call md um, md what md8 okay so and then copy this yield part and put it here so by doing like that and save you'll have something like this so our con our main will always be here and then the content will come here you can as well come here and put um, a border left come and save and refresh you have our left border there on top so our home will be here and then the content will be here so let us go ahead and uh, and what and 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 give this list some design so i can come here to what you call bootstrap ah, i know it in the head just come here and give uh, maybe mt2 mt4 mt5 and then come and give here a class called a class called group list and then if you do like that save come and refresh here you'll have something like this then come and uh, is it grouped list or group list grouped list i hope okay let me cheat from bootstrap that css file it's group list It's list group, I think. List group, yeah. It's list group, not group list. So come and give here a class called list group. Refresh here. We'll have something like this one. And then come and give here each of them class of list group item. And have something a little bit beautiful. Uh huh. Come here and just want to have something simple so if you come and refresh we'll have a beautiful thing like this one okay so you can navigate to home you can get here but uh you can as well change this one to div i hope and then change this one also to uh, a tag a tag a tag i hope that will work i'm not sure and then change also they are closing sorry 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 so i have to remove this one 
remove this one so you're going to be the list themselves and then change remove these li's and also make sure i close this one so come and refresh yeah it's beautiful now everything is clickable can you see i can click anywhere so i can go to home i can go to contact so everything is beautiful and it's clickable and everything can be listed so after doing that uh you will ha you should have got now enough information about bootstrap layout why you need bootstrap layout you see you write our menu only one time and it is able to appear on every what on every page otherwise if you practice now you should be understanding why you need even this bootstrap what bootstrap layout so after that uh we proceed to now la the main topic today which is um uh databases okay databases so you know our application always need databases uh for communication or for storing data and then retrieving it later almost every application need a database to store the data and then leave it later so in laravel uh, it simplifies the communication between your application and what and the database it becomes very 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 simple and interesting so you should be careful and and, and i mean you should be attentive to make sure that you understand every part of this database uh, section so to do that what we're going to do we're going to see we're going to can search uh, laravel and come laravel documentation and come to databases okay so here they will give you a very good introduction and uh, notes about what about laravel databases but what i'm going to do for me i'm going to concentrate much more on uh, practicals but if you always need notes you can always come here to laravel databases and you can learn more so the first thing to do uh to to if you want to use laravel databases the first thing to do you have to connect your database with your what with your project so uh what i'm going to do i'm going to create my 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 project so you should have started your your zamp okay start your zamp and make sure it is up and running start now the database my sql database if you're using a windows uh machine start your my sql what your my sql database and then after doing that make sure that you can access this page uh called uh php my admin okay at this point you should be able to access php my admin after starting your what your your zamp go to 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 my sql and then click on start my sql and then if you come to localhost stroke php admin or if you come here just to localhost you should be able to see something like this and then you'll see a place where a link that will take you to php my admin okay you can just go to a browser and go to localhost and then you'll see php my admin so uh, once you access this php my admin you're going to create a what our database uh, that you're going to connect with what with laravel so the first thing that i'm going to do i'm going to create the database so to create a database you just write here new and then if you come here now to home you'll see where the database is located and the information about what our database so here you can see the user default user is root at localhost so the database is located in localhost and the user is root okay so you can get some basic information so i'm going to come here to new and create my new database i'm going to call it um laravel underscore eg news eg news 24 you can call it anything you want yours so if i click on create i'll have this uh, database that is there but it's empty okay so the first task you're going to connect this database is what with our um, with our laravel project so i'll come to laravel and then look for the file called dot inv okay look for the file called dot inv this one dot inv expand it okay so here you'll find the configuration of what of your project most of configuration of your project it will be here so we're going to change some so the that the, the connection that we're going to use is going to be my sql and then the host is going to be localhost local host but before you change it you can first try the default host that was there but but mine is always at what at local host and then after you change the port the port will remain the same then you specify the database of course the database that we just created is called laravel underscore eugene 24. so likewise here put the name the exact name that you use for this database this one is the one that you put here so the user is root for our database 
and uh, for windows if you're using windows the default user is always nothing you leave it as it is but for me uh, mac uh, the default user is what is root also the the password sorry for windows the password is always nothing but for default users password on mac is always root so i put their root and then save so now we have connection between our, our what our database and uh, laravel so you can let me search test connection test laravel database connection i don't know how to do that so you can search it test test laravel database connection so how do we test see here mm -hmm. function test database so you just write this seed users okay okay i've not published the database okay the first thing that we're going to begin we're going to begin the migration so i'm going to explain what is meant by migration uh so in uh, in 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 laravel um okay. Use, okay in laravel uh when you're creating uh, your project or the models in your project you have to create them in different versions so if you want to change those versions for example at the beginning you're creating user and you realize that when you're creating user you're just recording their first name but later you realize that maybe you want to record also their agenda and maybe their their last name to do that you have to do what we call migration you add you add those new variables and create a what you create another you create a migration to change between these two so a migration is the change between uh, the, the i mean to is the cre creation of change between your project and what and uh, and, uh, and, and 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 the database itself so with that said let me go into practicals and uh, i show you what is meant so you can see here we've set our connection so now the next thing we're going to migrate uh, the current database to our what to our php i mean to our laravel uh, database that we just created so laravel uh if you come here to the uh, to this fold of database it ships our project with that with some models so let me come here to to database come to migrations you see that you have some things that are already there in the migration so if you expand them you see you'll have a table called uh, users table another table called uh, passwords reset table and another table called failed jobs another table called uh, a personal access so these tables they come with what with relevant and uh, they're always recommended to leave them the way they are so that you can be able to extend on them because laravel will manage authentication for us but if you want to also to manage your authentication but it's okay but laravel ships with authentication management for example you can see the table of user is already there so we have this table of user in what in migration now this table of users it means that uh it is still in form of what in form of text or in form of uh, raw data but if we want to create now this table of user into our real database okay into into our real database then we have to run the migration so once we run the migration this structure and uh, this structure that is here i'm going to explain how it's done that is here it is going to be created and then added to what as a table on our database otherwise laravel is the one that is supposed to communicate between your application and the database for us we'll be writing these files and then we do migration then laravel will do the logic of changing this file into what into our, into our um, tables on database so with that said as you can see our migration come i mean database laravel has come with default migrations that we can see here okay so what we're going to do we are going to migrate this project so that these um so that these tables or these raw data should be created in, as tables you know what in our project so we're going to expect four tables this table of users and this one of uh, forget password and this table of uh, failed jobs and this table of what of personal access tokens so those are the tables that we're going to do what to export i mean to expect once uh, our migration is uh, successfully done 
So to run immigration, just come here to Laravel uh, documentation and look for what you call migrations. Come database and look for migrations. So here they'll give you the whole definition, explanation, and everything. Okay, it's good to be here. So this is how we create a migration, and this is how we migrate. So I'm going to look just for the part of migrate here. So we're going to begin migrating before we even create the tables because we already have some tables. So I'm going to copy this link PHP artisan migrate this one th that command. So copy it. Now we're going to migrate these tables. Okay, these ones are the ones that are going to migrate. So to migrate them, you're going to first expand our what our terminal. So you can open the second terminal. Control Shift and the tilde button. Okay, the button under <coughs> under the escape key. Or you can as well come here to terminal and then say new terminal. So that you're going to have two terminals. One terminal for running our project. This is live. And then the second terminal that you're going to use to run the commands. Now here we're going to write the migration command. And you can see this is the migration command. PHP artisan migrate. PHP artisan migrate. So if you run this one, it's going to change this raw data into our what? Into our project into our into the tables so let's go ahead and run it so it's right php artisan migrate okay so when you press enter you're going to confirm beautiful everything is green everything is successful otherwise if you don't get such green stuff then you come again and look at your configuration of the database okay make sure if you left the word local if you left those uh, the the other IP address that you leave remove here on localhost now change it in case it fails change it to localhost in case it fails now change the word to localhost make sure you put the correct username make sure they put the correct password make sure you put the correct database try until you get this successful so if we come now to our database page admin and click on database you'll see we have four tables which is so beautiful one is for user and you can see in the columns and rows are there and another one is for password and the rest so that is so beautiful so it means that we have successfully created what our migrations so after doing that now the next thing we are going to do now uh, design our own database okay so before you design all your our own database you have to to sit down and see what you want to have in your what in your project so in our project you're going to use what we call lucid charts to design the project that you want to do so go ahead and search for lucid charts and uh, go ahead and log in but you can use any other software that you can use to design so here i want just to show you how i want my project of the news to look like so here in lucid charts you can create a new design or you can use an existing design you have free the one that you can use for free uh, up to five models you can use free but uh, mine already limited so i don't have money to pay i'm going to use but if you want new you can simply click new and then say new uh design eh? and then you can go ahead and design so i'm going for me i'm going to use just an existing one but it is optional as long as you have these things in your own head so what i'm going to do i'm going to design here now my what my table so my table is going to have i mean my database is going to have users so i'm going to create a new table so to create a new table just come here to diagrams i mean come here to diagrams come to shape and then uh, you can use one of these shapes eh? click on relation to entities okay so click on this one and drag and drop it here so this one you can use it to just uh, uh, design a table which will look like so let me zoom so i can see things clearly so i'm going to have a table called users Okay, users, and then here we'll have the fields of users. So maybe we can have ID, we can have the name of the user, we can have the username, where well, this one will be the what? The primary key. Okay, and then maybe we can have the password and the rest. Okay, I'm not going to design to draw everything, I'm just want I will just want to show you the what the relationships of my of the tables of the project that I want to create. So let me do this. Okay, so that's our first table. So the second table, I can just copy this very thing and I paste it somewhere. So the second table, is I'm creating a news application. The second table is going to be categories. Okay. So each, each news will be having a category. So we're going to have categories. 
categories category categories like this categories and the category will have a name will have an id it will have a name it will have um, maybe details and maybe it can have also a photo maybe it can have a photo so if i want to add a new column in bottom you just simply come click on it and then click uh, uh, on some icon here on top uh, do you think that i still remember how to use this thing there's something that i have to click on where is it i think they changed it it is now here on this side okay click on this below then we'll have another field below they put on this side used to be on top here <laughs> so i'm going to change this one to to what maybe photo so maybe each category will have a what a certain photo so that's enough for me to have a category okay so i'm going to create another model it's going to be now the post so this will be the news post okay so we'll have the what the news post news post let me just call it a post okay so a post will have a title I can leave it as a name okay title but if you want to keep your things organized leave it as a name okay so the title will be the name no let me leave it, give it title I'd love title but for me in my individual project i leave it as a name okay so it will have a title it will have a body or you can call details can have a body which you can call details and maybe it will have a photo hmm. and then it will have posted by okay posted by click then click on a new one posted by Okay, so this is going to be user ID because it's going to be a foreign key. So if it's a foreign key, in Laravel always make sure that uh, that foreign key is related to the other one. So this is since this table is called users. If one Laravel to organize their things in better way, and this is going to be related to this one. So everyone who posts, you have to know who posted it. So you better call it what user ID instead of calling it maybe another thing. Okay, so it's going to be user ID. So I can put still posted by, but it's better to call it user ID since it's going to be one user to post one thing. I can as well call posted by, posted under by. Okay, so let me call it user ID because it's one to one relationship, and I'll explain why you need this user ID. And then this, okay, we'll connect them later. Okay, so I have post, and another thing we have, we have maybe comment, uh, we have comment. I uh, have comments, so comment maybe it can be here between a post and a user. I don't know, I should even put it. I have comments, so I'm showing you I should design the table, your tables. Eh? So I have comments, so we're going to put your comments, comments, and each comment will have an ID, will have um, post, post ID where this comment was commented so he says this one is called posts okay so if you want to refresh it this side you just say post id not posts again id just keep that naming and you'll see the beauty about it later so the comment will have a body and maybe we don't need the photo in a comment we don't need the photo in a comment so i have to click there and we don't need an uh, user id yes the one who posted this photo we need it so we have ID of the po comment, the one who posted, I mean the the, the, po the the one who posted, and and then the what, the post that was made on this comment, and then the comment itself, okay. So about the likes, mm, the likes let us just keep it as a number. We'll not trace who liked what. Mm, okay. Yeah, let us also create a table of likes. Okay, so I'm just going to put here another table of likes, and these likes will just look much more like what likes okay this like will look much more like uh, a, a post eh? but uh, like a comment but they will not have only the what they will not have the body because just counting okay so i'll just remove this one so it will be it will be it will be a person a person likes a post okay it will be just a person likes a post that's all about liking okay so if someone has liked we can tell and if has not liked we can tell still so that's it that's it 
now after doing that uh we're going now to connect these what we're going to connect these uh, tables so to read these tables so categories of course a post will have a what will have a category so let me move this um, post category so one more thing that i'd forgotten is the category of a post so i'm going to add here one more column called post category so you're learning all these things along the way so i'll just click here on this bottom and put here category underscore id okay so let us connect so it's going to be one post will have one category so i'll just move this one here okay one post i mean uh, one many category can have one post okay we'll have one main categories can no it's supposed to be one post one category many 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 posts so do like that one category many posts and uh, that is connected uh, so one post uh, which else is friendly here we have a uh, user id so one is one post will have so I just come and point here to user id and make it meet here so one post will have you single user id let me start from this side but you can change also the these rows you can change them from here just click on it and then come here you can change them here okay end point and the starting one so what i'm trying to say here uh i'll call it you can even change this naming okay? you can change the name so here what i'm trying to say uh one user will have what will have um will have uh many posts uh, no one user will have many posts so it's supposed to be the vice versa so you can change this one and change this one the beginning should be like this and the end should be like this so one user can have many posts let me change the ending soon one to many okay so one user will have many posts okay so all that is learning uh, that's why i don't want to take you at speed so after doing that uh what else external thing that we have here of user id so one user can like i uh, can comment on many posts so what i'm going to do just come here so i'm going to again refresh this user put it here user id so one user will have one comment on a certain post so one user can have many comment and then each post can have many comments so just come and move this one to post id okay don't mind about the ending eh? but remind about the relationship okay so after that so i think this one eh? they are well connected so one user will have that so you now get the point so after doing that we go ahead and um, and design the likes so the likes will also look like a comment so let me put here in the bottom so i can have my things not crossing each other so much they may not cross each other but even if they cross each other it's not a scene eh? okay so i can even change the designing uh, the organizing that's the beauty about this thing eh? so let me put this one here in the middle put this guy in the middle here okay so and uh, now we're going to say a uh, one user so this is a user one user can have will have so if i have one one user will have one like so it's going to be one to one eh? so i can just say beginning is uh where is one is one and the ending is one you can as well do like that okay so one user will have one like and one like will have will depend on this post okay so i can do like that so by doing like that we have created our simple blog uh database okay that's our simple blog database she's so beautiful
okay so we can we have realized the relationships now we can go ahead and start creating the what the content so after doing that uh yeah it's beautiful so it's done eh? it's done so we can see the relationship now we can proceed to creating now the what the the, 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 the field themselves so once you have these things you can uh, you can now picture your database you can as well export it and uh, you can export it to png just come to file and say export to pdf and all the rest just come here to come export so export click on export or oh. to png you can say i want to export a certain section i want to crop a custom section so you can remove you can leave all the rest and export a specific part only so you see it's beautiful so export a specific part okay so crop it and then say download so once you download it you'll have that export so you can share with your friend in case you want to collaborate and you can have the whole picture of your what of your database so after doing that now let's go ahead and create this what these tables so the users table is already created by laravel so we don't need again to do what to create the users because users once you migrate the users table is automatically created so after creating the users table let's go ahead and create um now the the likes table okay the likes table i mean sorry 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 the categories table because the post will depend on what a category so again create a category table so to create a category table what you're going to do you're going to create uh, a command that's going to create a migration for category so to do that come to laravel documentation look for this guy you can read this move for me i already finished my task of reading so it's now up to you to come and read so come and copy this php artisan migration and then you copy that link and then modify it myself so i'm going to come to my project and then look for important commands you know i told that i always put my com important commands somewhere so that i should not search for them again and again so i'm going to paste here another important command php artisan make migration and then here you write the name of your what of your model so you write it in, in plural you write it in plural okay so that laravel should be able to relate them so here i'm going to create the first uh, model which is going to be category so i'm just going to say uh, i can even open my table you see my table is done it's done eh? it's beautiful so you have your table and you can see how your database is related so you can simply even collaborate with your friends so beautiful so uh -huh, now let's go ahead now we're going to create now our first table which is categories okay so it's before you create a post of course in the category so it's going to be categories write correct plural english words okay so if it's category make sure not not write categories it will work but you'll be limited to some beautiful uh, eloquent laravel uh, commands or features so php artisan make migration create categories in plural table like that then copy it and then run it okay so by running it you're going to have uh, a migration here another new migration here so i'll copy it and then expand the command line delete i clear everything and run it so you have two commands one for running our project live is don't close this one and another one for running uh, our 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 new commands for running the different commands so after writing that command paste it and run it beautiful you should get green color and you should so great green color so once you do like that close it you'll see another new line that has been created in the bottom here so if you open it you'll see there is a, a migration that has been created but it is not migrated it is just a migration that has just been created so if you come to this migration we can look into it and then you can see it's just nothing but a class that extends migrations of data of laravel then don't mind about many things here what you should mind about is here the upgrade so this upgrade it is where we're going to put now the properties of our what of our category so we agreed that our category will have an id it will have a name it will have details to have photo so we have different properties of what of laravel uh migrations if you want to know them come here to laravel documentation 
and look at uh, uh, types search for types uh -huh. look for columns types available for laravel you see these are the columns available for laravel so you have binary integer char what 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 all of them they are here and they are explained so if, for example here text string all these they're here so you come to string they will explain that this string it is just a varchar if you know database you know what is meant by varchar and we specify the minimum and the maximum if you want um, to create a column of um, of of of, discrete, of details, you have to point a text, and then this one it is a, a text field. So if you want to create a time zone, you have to create time. You have to store um, uh, the integers. All of that they are well explained here. So just come the documentation and go through it, that you can understand how things work. But since I'm concentrating on what on uh, on on, on uh, since I'm concentrating on uh, on what on practicals, I'll not go through all these things. So I'll come to string. You can see how a string. So now our date table. We already have the ID because Laravel knows that we need an ID. So we'll have the ID there. Okay, we need it the what the the the, the that the, the the table here. Okay, the table timestamps. These timestamps are also needed. So leave them. So the next thing is the name of this category okay so the name of this category is a string so what we'll do we we'll just simply write table and then you point at string so as you saw in laravel when you're writing a string command so it's going to be a varchar you have to limit to give it a what a limit okay you specify its name and its limit so also i'm going to just put here a name comma Maybe they are going to be a minimum of uh, maybe 500 letters. So we can say a title should not go more than 500 uh, letters. So it means that we are going to create this field that will have less than 500 letters. Okay. So after that, this is done, maybe a title, each each title will have now the, the details. So the details going to be table, uh, table, and then we point at text. Okay, and then you just give it a name. So the text you don't need to do what to specify its maximum. Okay, so this will be the details. But if you don't want to be limited with the title, just change this string to what to text also, and then remove this maximum part. So what else? We need a photo. A photo will be a link. Let's also make it just a text, and then we can say photo. You can say image or anything. So each category will have a what will have a photo so by doing like that we will have created a what our migration for category for for our, for our categories so let's go ahead and run it so if you want to run it so you're going to expand it the, the command and then you write the migration command okay we're going to migrate right now it is not on the database now we want to make this table we want to create this table if you come on the database and go, come to our laravel Eugene 24 you see we have only these tables there's no that table so if you want to change this table into our database now you have to run the migration command so let's go ahead and run the migration command so to do that we're just going to first write this command here it's just going to be uh, php artisan not make remove make migrate like this php artisan migrate so by running this command it's going to migrate all our the uh the unmigrated rows the unmigrated row data or row tables into our tables in the database so i'll expand the code i'll expand the the sorry i'll expand the command line and then run that php artisan migrate so by doing like this beautiful it has been migrated and the table has been migrated so if we come to our database okay if we come to a database can you see there's new table that has been created categories and we click on that table it will store an id it will store um uh a, a, a what it will store the date when it was created and when it was last updated the name the title and the photo just as we did what as how we define them beautiful so after doing that uh let's go ahead and now create for the rest okay then after we'll go into models so let's create for the rest very fast at very fast speed so the next thing is going to be posts so the first thing we're going to create now 
uh, important commands change from this and from post to I mean from categories to posts so I'll come and copy that expand the command run it uh -huh. then we have uh, our thing there so come and copy here some string okay so just come and copy here some text okay so a post will have a post will have what a post will have id it will have title so i'll copy title it will have title duplicate uh, sorry title duplicate quarter shift d uh, i mean control shift and arrow down okay control shift arrow down or you can try alt and shift and arrow down for windows so we'll have body so we'll come and remove this one and put body we'll have um a photo remove that one photo we'll have user id so this is a id i'll explain these things later how to connect the two but let us keep it as it is user id so leave it as it is user id so it's going to be user id it's going to reference the other side and this one's going to be an integer it's going to be an integer integer as it is here so just write integer make sure you write the correct spelling and make sure you can come here and uh, confirm from the level here okay so you have integer integer type should come to to the types can you see have another type called integer okay so user id will always be integer so i'll say integer and it's going to be user id as it is okay so and then you have category id because this table will have to belong to a certain category so can say category id as it is there okay so you just put the singular of a certain table that you created and then underscore then the id the singular of it okay so there's a reason behind that so i'll expand it i'll expand it sorry i'll expand my command and migrate this table so i'll just press up and migrate beautiful so if you come to our to our database you see the table is already there each is 24 uh posts and then it's there very fast we go to another one we go to comments so comments just going to come here and then i'll come our, our, our change this one to comments okay make it plural a correct english word comments okay then after comments we are going to come to now to our migration file and each we can now copy here some things so each comment will have user id so i'll just copy this one and we'll have user id so i'll come here to comment and put sorry upgrade here comment will have user id it will have also post id here post id it will have post id which is an integer and then it will have the body you can put here the body then after doing that we can migrate so i'll expand and migrate sorry uh oh i've just done repetition here come and delete uh oh delete this okay it's migrate beautiful it's been migrated so after that lastly we go to the likes so the likes going to be to look much more like comments but it will be like comment without what without the body so go ahead and change this one to what likes correct english words likes then expand the command create migration table migration file come the migration file change this one uh-huh so likes will have user id and the post id so it will have user id and the post id but not the body so i'll just copy this and paste here user id and post id but not the body then i migrate beautiful so everything is done this table is already created so everything is done and everything is already migrated okay so if i come here to migration laravel uh, project it's beautiful it's beautiful there right it's beautiful so everything is already migrated and i uh, have this kind of relationship you now what in a database that is so great so i think we should start from there in the next class in the next class i will now introduce you to laravel models 
and then we see how we create the models how we're going to make our project this project of ours to communicate with the what with the database creating posts receiving form from data from the form if possible looking at the authentication login logout all that will look them in the what in the next class because this class has been too long so make sure you don't miss uh, the next class so as usual before you leave your uh, programming session make sure you commit and then push before you leave your pc eugenius24 and then uh, is it the one okay so that's it for today guys Uh, this project has been removed from Laravel, but I'll work on it. So this that's it for today. So in the next class will start from there. We start from there. So make sure that uh, you go through this practice. Don't just watch, but watch as you practice. So that by the next class you have also created your own project. It can be any kind of project, any idea. It can be a shop. It can be a school. It can be what? But you should be able to put things together and make them related like this. So in the next class now we'll see how you can create models and communicate the database. Peace out.